Hey everybody, it's Dr. Karma Bryant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. So thank you to all the new followers. Thank you to all my uh, the comments. Thank you for everything that you guys do for me. I am so honored. I am so grateful. Thank you for being here. You guys make this channel what it is. And so today I wanted to come and talk to you guys. Uh, and, and I talked to a young lady. She's not a client. It's a young lady that I know um, who is dealing with a narcissist. Um, and he is a low grade narcissist. And so I asked her, I said, can I, can I share your story? And she gave me permission to share a story without me disclosing who it is that I'm uh, referring to when I tell the story. Uh, but she did give me permission to tell the story because I wanted to show you guys, give you guys an example of like a low grade overt malignant narcissist. Now she's a little older than him. He's probably about 25. So he's, he's young, you know, and remember I, was t I, I told you guys in other videos that when you're dealing with a low grade overt uh, narcissists, a lot of them are very malignant. A lot of them are just but wow, they don't care about the law. They don't follow the rules. These are the ones that you'll find um, doing have a lot of assault charges, um, a lot of domestic violence charges, arrests. Uh, you know, and and these are the ones they don't care. Uh, they're wild. They're you know they're they're angry and they 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 don't know who they are or what they can do yet. All they know is they like the feeling of the power and the control, and so they do it at all costs, at all means, uh, abuse. You know, they, this is what they do until they begin to graduate and begin to understand like how to do what they do. Uh, this one in particular, he's a uh, low grade overt uh, malignant narcissist. And, um, you know, she shared her story, you know, some of the stories. Uh, so uh, mother and father not together, only child between the two of them. And um, while, uh, 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 let me think for a minute, lost my train of thought because I had a text message. I apologize. But um, so what happened is, is the mother, the mother is a narcissist. The mother is a narcissist. The father's not. It's the only child between the two of them. So he was a, uh, what will we call it? A golden child. He was the golden child and he and, and the parents were the enablers. They never held him accountable for anything. They never held him accountable. Uh, he has about 10 kids now, 10, 10 11 kids, 25, 10, 11 kids, uh, 25, 26, 10, 11 kids, the parents paid child support for, I think, two or three of them. They don't hold him accountable. They don't make him get a job. Uh, what he does is, is he, he's a somatic. He's a somatic narcissist. Uh, so he's not, he's not intellectual, um, but he's, he's, he's not dumb, but he's not intellectual. He's not intellectual. He's not cerebral. He's a somatic narcissist. He's about his appearance, uh, about what he drives. He's really into cars and a lot of women. So he's a lot of secondary supply. And what he does is, is he, um, in order to cater to that, you know, that, that ego, that grandiosity, he rents, um, luxury cars. He rents a lot of luxury cars. So his father rents the cars or whomever woman that he's with at the time rents luxury cars. And he presents it as if these are his cars. And so he rides around on, these are his cars, irresponsible because someone else is always paying for the rental cars. He wrecks the cars. He does drugs. Um, and so, um, he, he'll wreck it. He'll damage it. He doesn't care because, um, no one holds them accountable. So whoever it is that rents the car is the one that's going to be responsible for the damage to the car. And if he doesn't get what he wants, he usually will tear up his father's house, uh, beat up. He, he is, he is very, very abusive. Will beat up, um, the girls or the, or the women. And the, the, the only thing with the mother is, is that she doesn't allow him to come into his, into her home or take advantage or fight or be, he does it at the father's house and he'll tear the father's house up. He'll tear down his big screen TV until he gets what he wants. So he has a grown adult person's temper tantrum until he gets what he wants. If he, you, the way he won't get a job. And so in and out of jail, uh, for assault, he's got about five assault charges. Um, and each one of them, and somehow he seems to slip in and out, you know, of, of the legal system and, and fly under the radar. Um, they don't, the, the, I think the, uh, who is it, the probation officer, you know, right now during the Corona, the probation officer doesn't keep up with them. Like they're supposed to, he's back in jail now, uh, for, I think, uh, I don't know if it's a warrant or drugs or something like that. So what he does is, is with each of these women, he gets with women so that he can use them to get money from them, clothes from them to build on his image, spends thousands of dollars on like a grill. You guys know what a grill is, grill clothes or he'll steal from them you know he'll take what they have and keep it for himself um, and if they don't give him money or if they won't buy him something he has adult temper tantrum and he'll beat him up he's i think he's broken noses he's a, a facial person he'll get you in your face he'll get you in your face and has made the comment that he does not like 
his male children. You know, the female's okay, but he's jealous over the male children. Very dangerous young man. Um, another thing, uh, let me think for a minute. What does she say? Um, another thing is um, everything, of course, you guys know everything is someone else's fault. Uh, went to jail and, and in jail, um, he uh, blames everyone for him being in jail. He's in jail, not because of the fact that he, he had a warrant or not because of the fact he got caught doing something he was told not to do, not because he didn't show up for, you know, probation officer, not because he just got another assault charge and someone called the police. And so it's everybody's fault because you called the police and I'm in jail because you called the police and, and you guys don't care about me and everyone is out to get me. So that he never takes accountability. And what the mother does, the mother will argue and fight with him. But if you come up against him or if you put him in his place or you hold him accountable, she always rescues him. She always rescues him and fights with him alongside with him. And, you know, and, and she's a narcissist, too, but fights along with him or alongside with him to attack, you know, the person that is holding him accountable. So accountability, calling the police because he's attacking someone, threatening to shoot him or uh, threatening to, to, you know, bodily harm. And he goes to jail. The police pick him up. Immediately, the mother would begin to um, cuss out the, the person that called uh and and gaslight 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 until it forces that person to either drop the charges uh you know or and not pursue it and so this this is this tangled web uh you know with this low grade narcissist uh another thing that that his mindset is is that um he will get with as many women as he can and He'll just have a baby to, he literally said that he has a baby to ruin their lives because most every woman he gets with is doing something, you know, is doing something, but not all of them. One young lady gave up all three of her children and wants to have a baby with him, lost her children into the system, but wants to have a baby with him because what he does is he laughs at the fact that I'll just get her pregnant and then leave her and ruin her whole life or um, her children get taken away. That's not my problem. And so, to be his kids. Those are his kids, you know. Um, but his whole thing is, and then for him not to pay child support because his parents pays his child support. His his thing is, is the more children I have, they're not going to put me on child support. And so this is a think about it. You know, this is um, the mindset of the average low grade narcissist. But this is just an example. I thought it was very interesting. This is just an example of uh, a low-grade narcissist, especially the young ones. Uh, that's like a um, young uh, rattlesnake. You know, young rattlesnake doesn't know, stop biting. They keep on biting and keep on biting until the venom is all out of their system. So they're biting until all the venom is out of their system. They don't know when to stop biting. They just keep biting. When a mature snake knows to strike and move, you know, strike, put the poison in and move, you know, but that young rattlesnake is just biting, 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 biting. And that's a low grade narcissist, just biting, 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 you know, and, you know, to move on from that, uh, that story to go to a older, overt, low grade narcissist. I told you they get worse within time. Some of them actually go from low grade, overt, malignant narcissist to mid grade. Even sometimes they do, you know, to evolve, evolve into the greater narcissist, but a lot of them will move from the overt low grade to the low medium grade and they may transform form to covert narcissists you know where it's not that obvious anymore because they're learning their craft let's put it that way it's not a skill it's manipulation and they're learning that craft and they're learning how much how easy a human mind is to manipulate if you think about it for a minute a human mind is very easy to manip people are easy to manipulate not everybody don't get me wrong not everybody is easy to manipulate but when you win the heart of someone that you care is easy because they trust you and sometimes we give trust out in entirely too quick and so it's easy to manipulate people because when you get into a relationship with a person, usually you give them 100%. And then from there, they have to prove themselves. Instead of you have to prove yourself and I'll give you 100% when you prove yourself. You might not get 100%, maybe 95%. You know, But most of the time when you get into a relationship with these people, 
these narcissists, you know, you give them a hundred percent and you don't know what they're like. Uh, and that's why I tell you guys, when you begin to learn and you watch videos, you know, they can sense when you are changing, they can sense when you've gotten some information and you're talking to someone else because it becomes a little harder to manipulate you. It becomes a little harder to abuse you. It becomes a little harder to do. And, and they have a little kickback. And so they don't understand like, who have you been talking? Some of you guys said it, who have you been talking to? Who have you been around? You you know, um, what you, and they want you to talk. They need you to tell them information. They're fishing for the information. But as you guys, you know, you, you, you're looking at these new supply, they don't, they don't know that they're, they're we're not going to say innocent because some of them were dirty at how they got your 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 husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your fiance, your boyfriend or whoever. Some of them actually help the narcissist get out the relationship to get to them, but they have no idea what they did or how they did it. And you have to remember when you start a foundation like that, if that's how you get into a relationship, I don't know why people think that that's not how the relationship is going to be. You can't take someone that is a serial cheater an abuser, you know, especially a narcissist, a serial cheater, you know, a serial abuser. Some of them don't, don't cheat. Some of you guys know some of them don't cheat, but they're abusive. They're verbally abusive, you know, and what makes you think that if you go and you ruin someone's relationship as a secondary supply, and some of you guys were the secondary supply, you know, but you wanted that person so bad, you didn't have a problem with that old supply knowing that you were there, or that's anybody, you know, or some of you guys are experiencing that. What makes you think, you know, that new supply wants to make sure that you know that she's there or he's there. She wants to, or he wants to make sure you see them. Whenever I show up, I want you to see me with them. I want you to see he's mine. She's mine. And you're looking at like, Girl, girl, dude, you have no idea what kind of monster you got with you. And the crazy thing is the longer that they're with them, the more they see the red flags. But sometimes they're too embarrassed, you know, because they bit off more than they can chew. And they're starting to see oh my gosh, I've probably made a mistake, but I can't let her know. I can't let him know. Uh, I'm going to make sure that they play along right along with the narcissist to make sure that you have this uh, perspective or this visual of this wonderful relationship. And it's not. And I told you guys before, you know, if you've got to prove to someone how great the relationship is or how happy you are in the relationship, then nine times out of 10, you're probably not happy in the relationship and it's not so great. And then on top of that, think about this especially you ladies if she you can't take something that doesn't belong to you so if she quote unquote took him from you he was never yours to start with in the first place he was community property and if she took him and it was that easy to take something it was never yours because if it's yours no one can take what is yours always remember that gentlemen you too if it's yours nobody can take it and it's not the fact that they took them from you they invited them and they left for them. But trust you me, they keep repeating the cycle. And if it's easy for them to leave and you've been in a long-term relationship with this individual to go to a whole new person that you have no history with, trust you me, there's always going to be instability and uncertainty in that new relationship. She doesn't totally trust him. He doesn't totally trust her, you know, and, and I'm talking about the new supply. They don't trust them because if it's easy for me uh, to, to work and get you to come with me, better believe they're doing the exact same thing. They don't change. They don't change. They don't change. I don't know how many times I have to say that narcissists do not, do not change just because you don't see it. Stop looking for it because some of you guys are so concerned over, you know, when, when are they going to get their karma? When, when are they going to get back with it? Stop looking for it because as long as you're looking for it, you're giving them thought fuel because they know that as long as you are thinking this way, I know because they've been around you so long. So as long as you are thinking this way, you're always anxious. You're always, you're always concerned. You're always hurting. And so stop thinking like that. Don't worry about getting them back. You focus on yourself. You need to focus on healing. You need to focus on you. You have to build your esteem. It's your self-esteem. It's your esteem. You have to build your esteem. You pick five things. When, when I come off camera and I cut the camera off and the, and the video stops, pick five things that you like about yourself. Now, some of you guys are going to struggle. You're not going to find anything that you like about yourself. Find five assets, five things that that you like about yourself five things and go in the mirror and say i like this about you i like this this is a strength i like this about you because if you don't see the value in yourself no one else is either i always give this example the lamborghini the maybach the bugatti is the bugatti the um what else 
Maybach, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce. You don't see anything advertised to sell that vehicle. You don't see it in magazines unless it's with a star. You don't see anybody advertising for it. You know why? Because they understand the, the value of what they have. They understand the value of the product that they're selling. So they don't need to get articles or magazines. They know that they have a quality vehicle. And if you're going to buy that quality vehicle, then you have money to purchase that vehicle of quality value. And that's the same thing with you. You're a human being. You're not an inanimate object. And you have to see your own value. Who said, you know, you could look at some of the cars like that's an ugly car, but it's like a million dollar car. You know, you can look at some of the cars or some of the paintings. Some artwork is worth millions. So those of you that love art, please forgive me. I'm not trying to offend you. But there's like artwork that's millions and millions of dollars. And it's the most ugliest thing I've ever seen. And I understand the Renaissance period, you know, the abstract art and the artist is expressing themselves. And, you know, you got the big eye, the little eye and whatever. And, and it is very creative. It is very creative. I wouldn't put it in my house. I'm just not a real big art person. I love realistic art. I like like the different shades of black women. I like the ones when you look at it, it looks like real artist, like real art, like black sheer. I like the figurines that look like real figurines, you know. So, but each to, to each his own. But there is the artwork, there's like millions of dollars and it is so ugly, but they know the value. It has value because of who it was. Michael Jordan's shoes. They used to be under Nike. Now they're Jordans all by themselves. You're paying for the brand. You're paying for the name. You're paying for Jordan. That's his name. He understands his value. He's one of the shoes that never went away. Jordans never went away. And you're wearing Jordans on your feet. And some of those shoes are expensive. But it's the name. It's the brand. It's the He knows the value. You're paying for his name. You have to get your worth. I don't care what anybody has told you. I don't care what you've been told by your parents. I don't care. Your parents were probably dysfunctional. You know, and some of you guys come from narcissistic families. The person that you were with that you love the most, it is the, the hardest thing is to hear the person that you love the most tell you all the negative things about you. You know, you, it is hard because this person is the person that you trust. And if your man tells you that you're beautiful or if your woman tells you that you're handsome, it doesn't even matter what anybody else says. And of course, you guys know you can look like a troll. If you look like a troll, they think you're beautiful, then we're going to love you too because you're family. You know, and if, if they leprechaun, garden gnomes, that's just what it is, you know. But if, they, but if they tell you that you're beautiful, there's nothing else anybody else can say to you. You feel good about yourself. So imagine the person that you're closest to and the person that you love the most tells you all these negative things about you. They tell you all these negative things about you. And guess what? You believe it. But you never take in consideration you're dealing with a dysfunctional individual. You're dealing with a person that has a mental disorder. They're so, an emotional, they're emotionally, mentally challenged. That's what I can say, you know, and there's something wrong with them. And, and people have narcissistic traits. Remember that. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, you're talking about pathological disorder, meaning that it disrupts their life, interactions with other people, their jobs, their environment around. Trust you me, trust you me. They're the ones with the problem, not you. And now it's time for you to recover. Now it's time for you to come out of that shell, out of that cave, and it's time for you to recover. And I hope this video has helped you. And I'm very passionate about what I teach because I, I, I love to see people smile. I love to see people, you know, grow. I love to hear these stories about how, you know, the videos have helped you, the things that you have done. Some of you guys, you know, you saved my life because I took this advice. I love to hear that. And that is my whole goal with you guys is to teach you something. I can't see all of you guys. And one day we're going to see each other. You know, one day when this Corona thing is all over with and it's coming, you know, we'll be able to see each other. We'll be able to travel and we'll be able to see each other. And I'm so looking forward to meeting so many of you guys and we can actually like hug y'all gonna come up here hugging me all the time now you know i'm not you know sometimes i get overwhelmed you get off me you know too many people but i'm gonna hug you guys you know and 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 appreciate you guys for supporting me so hopefully this has helped you please make sure you subscribe to my channel is dr carmen bryant overcoming narcissist abuse i haven't got a title so by the time you get to this the beginning of the video which by the time you hear this you've already seen the title of the of the uh i'm gonna think of a title 
because I was kind of like jumping from topic to topic, but I really wanted to say that. I wanted to give you that story and I just wanted to give you guys some encouragement because it was an interesting story. I just want to, I'm a storyteller. You guys know I'm a storyteller. So, but I give you a story so that you guys can get a visual so that you can compare your own self. Like, wow, that's very, okay, I can see that because we can give you a whole, you know, clinicians and, and professionals can give you a whole lot of clinical terminology and everything and, and you're listening to it, but you can't put it in picture form. What does it look like? And so I, I, I work very hard. I'm making sure I'm a storyteller and I use that to give you guys a visual of what it is that you guys may be going through. And so make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check out my, um, I was going to say my auntie, my mother's channel, uh, my, my mentor's channel, Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Make sure you subscribe and share our videos. Also, my big sister goes, uh, she does Periscope. Um, and I, you guys got to Destiny Man, the qualities to look for. Kathy Gibson, look for it on Amazon. Excellent, short read powerful read. She's got another book coming out. You guys got to get it. This this woman right here is off the chain, and I'm proud to call her my big sister. Uh, and of course, my mother, Apostle Helen Sadler, she's got a book coming out, so you guys stay tuned for that. Um, and those of you that know my little sister, Natasha's Touch, she does jewelry. Now, this one was given by a subscriber, and I really, really appreciate it. I didn't get a chance to thank her last time, but this, I usually am not really a silverware. I've been wearing silver more often, but it's got the gold in it, and I think it was so pretty, and I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for thinking of me and even sending me gifts. I am so honored. Thank you so much. I'm always the one that wants to gift give. So when people give me gifts, I'm like, ooh, ooh, it's mine. So thank you guys so much. I do have a book. It's called Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. Find it on Barnes & Noble and on Amazon if you want Kindle or ebook. And then those of you that are out of country, sometimes Amazon doesn't send there or Barnes & Noble doesn't send there. Go to Westbow Press. All that information is right up underneath my video. Those of you that are looking for coaching, <clears throat> Oh, excuse me. Um, I got excited. But those of you that are looking for coaching, um, you can email me at Dr. Carmen Bryant, and I will provide you with the rates of my fee, my fees, my rates. Um, if you're looking for counseling, unless you are in the state of Washington, um, I cannot provide you with counseling. So uh, there is a vetted uh, site. You can find that underneath the links, and it's uh, betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen, you'll get a 10% discount. And on top of that, if you're having financial issues, let them know they might be able to provide you with a grant. Some people have gotten a grant um, to make sure that they get a counselor within their area. So you can get a counselor within your state that is licensed. When you ask about um, uh, counseling, don't ask them if you understand narcissist abuse. Ask them if they understand domestic violence, psychological abuse, the long-term effects of psychological abuse, parental alienation, PTSD, complex PTSD. Those are not the things that I can work with you on coaching. Those are only things that I provide in counseling. But for me as a counselor in Washington, my book fills up very, very quick. Uh, sometimes I have a little more space for coaching than I do for counseling because my books fill up really quick with counseling. Um, but please t check out uh, betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. Check out one of the counselors. Some of you guys need counselors before you need coaches. So try to get into counseling first before you get into coaching to deal with some of the psychological and emotional issues that you guys have been through with these narcissists. Now, am I forgetting anything? You guys can check me out on Facebook, YouTube, and on Periscope. So I've been streaming on several um, several uh, platforms on Sunday because I'm connected to a new stream yard. So I'm connected to stream yard. So I'm able to stream from different areas. And so I would love for you guys to join me. I'm on Instagram as well. Thank you guys so much once again. And you guys go be great.